this one took a while to figure it out, but I finally did it. This this effect is completely made using geometry nodes and is 100% procedural. So yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so in order to create that effect, we're going to need Blender 3.0 or above. And we are going to delete our default cube. We're going to do a shift A and add an icosphere into our scene. We're going to make sure that it has four subdivisions and do a right click shade smooth. Let's move on to our geometry nodes editor here. Let's click on new. And we are going to use another object to actually displace this original object so i'm going to add another icosphere and let's reduce the subdivisions to two and let's move that icosphere a little bit on the y-axis here right we have everything set up so i'm going to bring this icosphere into my node tree here and i'm going to go ahead and add a geometry proximity modifier now this is a modifier that is actually going to help me get the value of the distance of this object from the object with the geometry node tree in it. So what exactly is happening here, right? So in order to show you that in practicality, I can just simply add a set position node and take the distance function and just add it to the offset of the set position node, right? Now, as soon as I do that, can you see it's displacing it a bit, but if I move this object, there's nothing happening. And that's because uh, the object info node is set up to original instead of relative. Now, if you ch change it to relative, it just makes sure that it's accounting for any changes in the object and just working accordingly, right? So just make sure that you're changing it to relative because it's important or else the effect doesn't work. All right, so once we have that, now, as you can see, the effect is a little bit more exaggerated than we want to. So I want to control it somehow, right? And for that, the node that we're going to go with is a map range node. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in right between the offset and the, uh, the set position and the geometry proximity node. I'm going to keep this uh, from minimum to zero, but from maximum, I'm going to change it to three just to change the amount of effect this other object is having on the original object, right? Now, you can play with it depending on how much you want is... is uh, you can just uh, change the area of effect of the object. All right, so I'm going to keep it to three. I'm going to change uh, the two max to zero because I don't want the object to be changing its original position, right? I just want it to be displaced in a, uh, a little bit. So I'm going to change the two max to zero and it brings the object back to its original position. But for to minimum, I'm going to change it to 20. Now, the more uh value that you add here the more exaggerated the effect's gonna be uh so you can play with it according to your liking i'm gonna go with 20 for now now if i move the object can you see it's automatically displaying the object depending on the location of the other object uh, now that we know the displacement how to make that displacement effect let's distribute some points on our object so we're going to use distribute points on faces node let's plug it right between here and let's add about a thousand particles in here right still displacing it in a weird way and that's because currently it's displacing it in all three axes that is x y and z and i don't really want that i want it to be displacing on its own normals now how do we do that well that can be achieved simply by adding a vector math node and let's plug this right between the map range and the offset and change it to multiply and just take this normal and just plug this in into the bottom socket of it now you can see that this is now displacing all those points in its own direction now that we have this there is no variance to how it's displacing stuff and that we can just fix that just by adding a simple math node here right between the map range and the vector math node and change it to multiply and i'm gonna add a random value node right just to add a little bit more randomness to our displacement and let's change the minimum value to about 0 0.2 and the reason we are doing that is just to make sure that every point is getting displaced if you keep it to zero there there might be some point that are not affected by this other object at all right and we don't want that we want a little bit of displacement everywhere so i can i'm going to change it to 0 0.2 the points are getting distributed a little bit more randomly right and that's great so uh, let's also add something so that we can control the amount of points that are getting distributed, right? So I only want the points to be emitted where this object is uh, getting displaced, but uh, wherever it's not getting displaced and where the object is still, uh, there shouldn't be any points that are uh, over there. Well, we can simply fix that by adding a compare node. So we can add a compare floats. Let's change it to greater than. And let's plug this multiply in into the A socket here. And let's take the results and plug this into the selection of the distribute 
points on faces now as soon as i do that it just takes away anything that is not getting displaced in the first place right this is a good time to bring our original object back into the scene right uh, how do we do that well simply by adding a joint geometry node we're going to plug this right before the output and uh, the set position node and i'm going to take the original geometry and plug this back in now the geometry is back uh, but as you can see that even though the points are getting distributed the geometry is still intact so i want to find a way to delete the geometry where the points are already uh, displaced right so how do we do that well uh, to achieve that we're going to add a separate geometry node and let's plug this right between here and we can use this value that we already created to achieve the result that we are looking for right so i'm going to take this output from this multiply node and plug this plug this in the selection of our separate geometry now if i do that it's uh, doing it in an opposite way than how i want it there's a simple way to fix that can you see there are two outputs in this uh, node one says selection the other says inverted now in this case since we want the opposite of it we're going to take the inverted section and plug this into the joint geometry and also make sure that you're changing the points to faces right so just change the drop down to faces it just gives it a little bit more even distribution comparatively so now it's deleting the geometry wherever the points are already distributed so which is we're getting closer now if i bring this object a little bit closer can you see that the points even though they are displaced they are still there and now these points are getting deleted after a certain point which is not what we want uh, we want it to be deleted after it reaches a certain threshold so how do we achieve that well we already have a value that can help us with it but in order to achieve that we're going to need to instance an object on these points so for that i'm going to just plug this right between the set position node and the join geometry node the instance on point node to instance the object and right now all the points disappears and that's because we have not instanced anything yet so i'm going to add an icosphere here and take this output and add it to the instance the size is way too big now so i'm going to just reduce it to 0 0.07 and now we have all our points all right so in order to achieve that we're going to take this value from this greater than uh, node and just plug it into the selection of our uh, instance on point node that's that's going to refine the effect a little bit more right but it's still not uh, giving us what we want and there is a few more tweaks that we need to do in order to achieve that let's get back here into this section and what we really need is to tell it where exactly it needs to delete the points right for that we have to create fake vector value for it so in order to do that we can just simply add a combine xyz let's plug this in into the multiply value here and i'm going to take the output from this multiply node and just use it as, as vectors in in these um, in the combine xyz just to create a fake uh, vector position for these uh, nodes and we're going to go ahead and use it now if you can see that the closer i get the more the more the points disappears right so after a certain value the point automatically disappears and so we have already achieved the effect that we were looking for but now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more randomness to this effect for that uh, again the easiest way to add randomness is with random value node uh, first let's add some randomness to the rotation for that i'm going to change it from float to vector and plug it into the rotation and the max value i'm going to change it to tau now tau is just basically 360 degrees in radiant value radians value right so in this the value is not defined in degrees but radians i'm going to use the same random value and use it in the scale as well it just gives it a little bit more of that shard look now it's six is way too high so i'm going to reduce it to one and again let's give some random numbers here 0 0.5 0 0.2 and can you see it's just it, it just gives it an effect like the objects breaking up the effect is pretty much done now we are going to quickly go ahead and shade it a little bit so that i'll tell you how i achieve that emission effect and don't drop off now because i also want to show you how to make sure that we make this other object disappear from your camera because if you don't do that this object appears in your camera as well and just if that's what you're going for you can just drop off now if not then stay tuned okay all right so i'm going to change this here to shader editor and uh, let's add a new material here and let's name it particles right and we'll go back to our geometry nodes and we'll add a set material node here and let's select our particles material 
And let's delete our principal BSDF and we're going to add an emission shader here and plug that into the surface of our material output. Nothing showing up yet and that's because we were not in the rendered view. So let's switch to the render view and you'll also quickly add an area lamp here. We'll just move it up, scale it up and reduce the wall strength to zero and increase the strength of the area light to about 500. All right, so uh, now we have some light in our particles, but it's just a little bit constant and that's not what I want. So let's increase the strength of the emission to about five and also add a noise texture in here. And uh, let's plug that in, take the factor and plug that into the color. And we're gonna add a color ramp and we're gonna use this to actually color our object, right? So how do we go about doing that? For the noise section, I'm gonna increase the detail to 15 roughness down to zero and the scale to 0 0.7. I also do a control T, make sure you have a node wrangler add-on enabled and just take this camera output from the texture coordinate and put this into the vector of the mapping node. Now let's just select any color that you want. So I'm gonna go with a dark blue, I'll add another one, go with a lighter blue and uh, let's add another one. And let's just delete this black one here. And this will be a really light blue. That's about it. Uh, that's how I created the effect. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how I dis made this other object disappear. So the way you do that is you go to the object properties, you click on visibility, and in ray visibility, just make sure you're unchecking everything because we don't need anything from this object except for its location. Now this object is not gonna be visible in your render at all. And you can just simply animate the location of this object and achieve that effect, right? And again, this works on anything. So I've added another object right here so that I can demonstrate how this works. So for, it's, it's gonna work on any kind of complex object as well. So all you have to do is just go back to the geometry nodes, add that geometry node, and now it's just disintegrating this object as well. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.